Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about the radio exam. So if you've done your P-Star and you're almost ready to solo, your instructor might have already mentioned to you that it's time to do your radio exam. But what is the radio exam? So in today's video, we're going to be covering what the radio exam is, of course, what really comprises of the exam, and a couple of tips that I've learned when I was getting ready for my own radio exam. So let's just dive right into it. So the first part of the radio exam is the written portion. So if exams really aren't your strong suit, I assure you that there is a lot of practice questions that are online and available to you for free. I've linked some of those websites down below for the resources that I even use to prepare for my radio exam so that you could also check them out. Um, on top of that, I found out that Hangar actually has a whole test bank of 150 questions for you to practice for your written radio exam. And the best part is those questions that you might find on your exam will definitely be the ones that you've practiced with. But with that being said, if the written turns out to be easy for you and exams actually aren't that bad for you at all, do not neglect the oral part of the radio exam. That's actually the speaking part where the examiner will be kind of practicing some scenarios with you. The second part of the exam is the oral portion of the radio exam. So if your instructor has already approached you about the radio exam, they would have recommended that you read something called the VFR Phraseology Guide. So this is actually a guide that TC has put out and it highlights those key terminology that you should know when it comes to radio etiquette per se. So definitely read the VFR Phraseology Guide not just to pass the exam but also for your own skills when it comes to flying. Take it from me, I still get flustered when I speak on the radio and I make a mistake and the VFR Phraseology Guide sometimes quickly enters my head and reminds me about the words I should be saying instead of yes, I should be saying affirmative or if I want to rectify a mistake I made, I say correction. So these sort of tiny things will make a larger difference along the line the sooner you read the guide. All right, so I have three tips on how you can do better on your radio exam, and I'm saying this from my own personal experiences. So number one is read the CFS. I made the huge mistake of not reading the CFS. To be honest, I wasn't even familiar with what that is. CFS is the Canadian Flight Supplement, PDF, totally free, search it up for your own airport, and just read that CFS. It's already sectioned off what radio frequencies are there, or what is the specific circuit procedures for a specific runway. So I've pulled up the CFS for CYXU or London, and I'm just taking a look and making sure that it's not expired, and then I can refer to other things like the runways that there are at CYXU, or what kind of class or zone it's in. I can also take a look at the length of the runways, uh, what it's made out of, if it's gravel or if it's grass, this would be important for like your takeoff or your ground rolls when you're calculating those. As well, it has the frequencies listed out, so your ATIS, ground and tower, you can definitely jot those down before you get into your flights. As well, there's also notes that are taken down about which circuits are being used for which runways and so forth. So CFS is pretty valuable. Tip number two is talk to your friends talk to the friends who have done the radio exam ask them what they found was tricky for their radio exam whether that's the written or the oral ask them what that curveball was when they did the oral part of their exam did the examiner ask them something that they really didn't expect would be on the portion of the exam these sort of things really do help and it helps you also grow closer to your peers. You guys kind of get to bond over the hardships when it comes to becoming a pilot. And number three, don't guess. So because I didn't read the Canadian flight supplement for my oral portion of the exam, and then the examiner proceeded to ask me a question from the CFS, I had no clue how to answer. So I guessed, and that was my mistake. Instead, what you should do and what I did end up doing was asking the examiner to teach me, asking him where that source of information would be. And they're more than happy to explain that to you because at the end of the day, it's your safety that they're also concerned about. It's not about just passing an exam. So 
don't guess <laughs> just ask the instructor or the examiner going forward to teach you if you don't know something because it's your safety at the end of the day that matters The VFR phraseology guide is not the end all be all, so don't plan on taking intensive notes on that guide because no one's going to ask you and single out a single sentence from the guide and expect you to remember it. The oral portion is really about the script, the talking, the dialogue, right? So if you get flustered on the radio and you just like don't know where to start when it comes to making a call, just remember that your call should consist of three things in this order your call sign, your geographical location if that's relevant, and your intentions. So it might sound something like this. If I'm coming back to the airport from our practice area, I would say something like London Tower. Golf Tango Delta Fox Star Juliet is 12 miles north of London, inbound for full stop. That's it. And people have different variations of the way they say it, so don't be so anxious if you deviate from any sort of script that you've received from your flight center. It's not the end of the world. As long as you've gotten those pieces of information in, you've done the job of speaking on the radio. The examiner will also be giving you scenarios to navigate through, whether that's an overshoot, heading changes, or runway changes. So for example, an overshoot. This was one that I actually stumbled on for my radio exam for the oral part and they just asked me like what the call would be if you want to do an overshoot and I made the mistake of saying London Tower permission to overshoot but you don't need permission to overshoot so in the moment you might get flustered and you might say something that you're not supposed to say um, rectify that realize your mistake and move on the correct answer would have been London Tower overshoot because you never need permission to overshoot. If you're overshooting, there's probably a reason. Maybe it was a hard landing, maybe it was dangerous, there's a wind shear, etc., etc. right? So things like that, just brush up on your calls and don't be such a stickler to the script. I hope that this video gave you some relief if you're preparing for your radio exam. Just know that yes, it's not as easy as your P-star, but if you practice, you will pass your radio exam. And as always, everyone, if you have any questions or comments, um, just leave it down below. My Instagram and socials are all linked in the bio, so please check those out and DM me if you have any questions. Also, shout out to Ashton W for asking the question in preparing for the radio exam. Um, it's because of them that this video came out. So as always, if you have something that you're curious to know more about, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you to it. See you next time, student pilots, and hopefully with a radio license in your hand. Bye!